The Line Formation, a recent evolution in the history of formation fighting. Formation fighting in warfare has existed for thousands of years and has always been more important than superior numbers in battle. The universal principle of formation fighting has been to maximize force, be it spears or firearms, that can be brought on an enemy at once. There is no better example of this than Frank Miller's 300, exaggerating the events at Thermopylae, where the outnumbered Greeks, using their phalanx formation, brutalized the Persian army. The invention of gunpowder altered formation fighting slowly. The formation shown here in Elatriste is a pike and shot formation. This is the Battle of Roqua during the Thirty Years' War between Spain and France. Matchlock muskets are being used, along with pikes, as muskets are not yet effective enough to be relied on alone, and supplemented traditional pike tactics. As muskets improved, the ratio of muskets to pikes increased, until bayonets made pikes virtually obsolete. As muskets and rifles improved, so did the value of the line formation. Columns and squares of men formed into lines to maximize the number of infantry who can see and therefore shoot all at once. Thinner lines also kept men from shooting from deep within the rear of a formation, risking those in front of them. En masse, or volley fire, was the primary purpose of the line formation. Muskets simply were not accurate enough to be effective on their own during a large-scale battle. However, volley firing a line of muskets at the same elevation and the same target created a saturation effect, guaranteeing some of the shots hitting the enemy. Men were also forced to stay standing during this process, as reloading required use of gravity to pour gunpowder down the barrel. Getting now, dogs. Fight. Pour. Spit. Tap. Do it again, Dubs. Firing all at once also helped to drop large sections of an opposing force, which could break a formation and cause a rout. Line formation warfare was often a giant game of chicken, to see which side would flee first. Due to lines often breaking and fleeing before being wiped out, line warfare was often less deadly than sometimes portrayed on film. Lines benefited from a decreased vulnerability to cannon fire. Solid cannonballs bounce, and the thinner a line, the less damage it can do bouncing through it. There's a good example of this bouncing effect in Mel Gibson's Patriot. In the American Civil War film Glory, you can see how the human body does little to stop an iron cannonball. This scene was inspired directly from a Civil War diary. Lines had strengths and weaknesses against cavalry. A solid line of men could repulse a cavalry charge with volley fire, or using bayonets introduced in the mid-17th century. Well-trained infantry could form an infantry square to counter cavalry, which often tried to flank line formations. There's no better cinematic example of a square formation than Waterloo from 1970. Cavalry squares required significant training to execute, and great discipline by the men who needed to reserve their volley fire for targets at approximately 30 meters. If a square fired too soon, the cavalry would charge during reloading. If the square fired too late, they may hit their target, but the horses may still have enough energy to crash and break through the lines. Line formations were a type of organized chaos, sometimes done justice on film. Often these lines were thick with smoke from gunpowder. The line could actually be the safest place during the confusion of a battle, because if you couldn't see, at least you knew who was on your right and left shoulder. Staying in line was also the only hope against surviving a cavalry charge. Line tactics did evolve slowly, to include fire in advance or withdraw, and two or three line volley fire, as most classically shown in Zulu.
Technology around the time of the American Civil War created weakness in the line formation. Riflemen during the Civil War using accurate ammunition, such as the mini-ball, could pick off men in line formations outside of volley fire range. However, it would not be until World War I that line tactics were completely obsolete, with the proliferation of barbed wire and automatic fire creating a new horror in military tactics. Listen, our guns have stopped. You don't think... Maybe the war's over. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief overview on the line formation. And remember, the French can fire three rounds a minute, so keep practicing.